There's a town in Montana Territory where it's against the law to carry a gun. The sheriff lives by this order, but because of it, other men can die. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual accounts. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. The journey had taken 98 days from St. Louis. I had come by riverboat up the Missouri, the little stern wheeler climbing, churning, scuttling over 2,000 miles of sandbar and rapid, then into the lonely wastes of another, swifter stream, the Yellowstone, until we finally docked at South Sunday in Montana Territory. My ticket had cost $300, which left me about 50 in my pocket, and the slim hope that there would be a letter at the express office with my remittance from England. Afternoon. Just in off the boat? Right. I wonder if there's a letter for me, J.B. Kendall... Kendall, uh, mm. any trouble on the way up? I hear the Sioux been kicking up their heels. Sitting bulls making big medicine again. Don't sound good. And we didn't see any. Kendall, Kendall, you English, ain't you? Uh, yes. I yes. figured by your talk. Uh, Don't see many of you in these parts. Uh, nope, nothing for you, mister. You're sure? It's rather important from, from England? Nope, nothing. Uh, Maybe tomorrow on the overland, though. You say, are you planning to stay a while? I think so. Better get and register, then. Register? Over to Sheriff Clanton's office. There's a notice on the wall, maybe missed your attention. All strangers to South Sunday will, within one hour of arrival, register at the office of the sheriff or be prosecuted. That's Clanton's orders. Surprise you missed the signs. They're all over. Uh, thank you. Well, that's all right. Wouldn't want to see you in trouble. This ain't the healthiest town in the territory, not for strangers. Oh, uh, any particular reason? What? Oh, excuse me. Afternoon, Mr. Farley. This here's Mr. Kendall, just off the boat. I, I was telling him about registering. Now, that's a good idea. Uh, Dick Farley is one of the sheriff's deputies. Helps keep South Sunday law-abiding. Big job. What's your time, business, Jester, Mr. Kendall? Oh, you might call me a uh, jack-of-all-trades. I might. I do a little writing for a Lon- London newspaper, you know. An Englishman's view of the Wild West, that sort of thing. Well, we don't take to strangers. Oh, really? Shame. I've been looking forward to my visit. Ah, well, now you've seen it. You know what it's like, so supposing you get yourself back on that boat and try up the line to Rosebud at Junction City, huh? (laughs) I don't think so. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'll register at your office. You carrying a gun? No. Put your hands up. Over your head. Higher. Now, you hold it just like that. Just so. All right. That's your baggage? Yes. Take it up. I beg your pardon. I said, pick it up. Oh. All right, come on. Tell me, Mr. Farley, how did your town get its name? How should I know? I thought you'd take an interest, just as a matter of pride, a civic pride. Mr., I don't like the way you talk or what you say, so you shut your mouth, hear? Inside. Where you been, Dake? I've been checking on this fella, Frank. He just come in off the boat. He says he's a writer, a newspaper in London or something. He ain't caring nothing. I searched him. You're Sheriff Clanton? Yeah. J.B. Kendall. I understand I have to register. Yeah. 
A writer, huh? You want to write about South Sunday? I might. How come? As a matter of fact, the name intrigued me. You kidding? No, not at all. I write about the West, and you're in the heart of it. From what I understand, there might be trouble brewing with the Sioux and the Cheyenne. I'd like to be here if it blows up. What's the name of your paper? The London Times. You ever hear of a Dake? No. Mr. All kinds come to these here parts. Now, I ain't exactly calling you a liar. That's quite all right. One can't be too careful. Uh, here, my papers. Uh, okay, be careful. Very subtle. Uh, uh, yeah. London Times. That's what it says. Here, you see, Dick? Yeah, that's what it says. Any other strangers get off the boat with him? No, just him. Well, you sound all right to me, Mr. Kendall. Uh, just you remember, I got a set of rules here. You live by them while you're here, you'll get along. That seems fair enough. No man, except them authorized by me, carries a gun in South Sunday. That way we don't get a bunch of crazy, liquored up miners and the like shooting up the place. It seems the usual thing for a man to be armed in most places. It ain't usual here. It's again the law. Oh, I see. You got yourself fixed up at the hotel? No, not yet. Well, and you go on over to the Empire, Mr. Candle. You tell them Frank Clanton send you. They'll take care of you. And very good of you. Dake, uh, take a look at his baggage. Right. Well, you're, you're going to search my luggage? That's right, mister. There are no guns in South Sunday, not worn or hidden. That's a law. I haven't got one. I sure am glad to hear it. I like a peaceable man. Yes, sir. A fellow like you might think of settling down here in South Sunday. The quietest little town in Montana Territory. It's an opportunity for a man. Well, I'll keep it in mind, Mr. Clanton. There ain't nothing in his bags. Well, now, Mr. Kendall, you enjoy your stay here. Anything you want, you just ask me. And uh, I'd appreciate it, sir, if you put my name in your paper. Whatever you want to say is okay with me. My hotel room was a palace in comparison to the cabin on the riverboat. After cleaning up, I went downstairs to the saloon bar in the hotel, ordered a drink before dinner. The place was practically empty, but I wasn't alone for long. Hi. You're the English fella, aren't you, Kendall? Yes, that's right. I'm Lila. I work here. Frank Clanton said be nice to you. I'm being nice. You want to buy me a drink? It's on Frank. Oh, I'm delighted, delighted. Uh, bartender... Champagne, Harry. Yeah. Um... Frank says it's not ladylike to drink whiskey. Hey, what do you do to that man? I never seen him like this. He thinks I'm going to write about him for my paper. Are you? More than likely. You going to write about me, too? <laughs> if you want me to. I'm Dake Farley's girl. Dake doesn't like you. He got mad when Frank said to be nice to you. Does everybody in South Sunday do what Clanton tells them to do? Sure. Why? Here's a drink. Oh. Well, good luck. Uh, look here, Lila. What about Clanton? You seem like a nice fella. Don't ask questions. Well, what about you, then? Me? What do you care? Where are you from? I was born in Ohio. Got married and came out west. Five years back, my husband got killed in a gunfight. I don't know. I kind of drifted around. Ended up here, one place as good as the next. Is it? Yeah, I guess. What about you? Your home's in England, huh? It was. You one of them lords or dukes or something? <laughs> no, not exactly. Married? No, no, no. Must be interesting traveling around, seeing new things. Oh, it has its advantages. But I suppose you'll be glad to get back home. Well, let's just say that one place is as good as the next. Oh, you can't go back, huh? Trouble? In a way. Ah, look, your friend's just come in, Mr. Farley. Listen, huh? you be careful with him. Dake can get off on me. Well, doesn't he take orders from Clanton, too? Don't talk smart like that to him. It riles him. Ah, Mr. Farley, good evening. Would you join us? No. I just come to say, don't you get no ideas about Lila. Now, what ideas do you think I'd have? I'm telling you. You're telling me what? Keep your hands off my girl, you understand? My dear fellow, I haven't touched your girl. The thought never entered my mind. We were just having that drink, Dake, like Clanton Lila, said. Lila, you That's keep a... out of this. 
Do you know that I find your manner toward this young lady rather offensive? Well, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? Not at all. Now, you think you can come in here with your fancy talk, your fancy ways, and make a fool out of me? Well, I may be Frank's a sucker, but not me. I don't like you. I don't trust you one bit. Mr. Farley, it couldn't be of less consequence. What do you think of me? He'll kill you, you just like he... Up. <gasps> oh, that I don't stand for, chum. <laughs> Oh, my nose. My nose. Imagine it's broken. Now, if you don't mind, I'll relieve you of these. A chap of your disposition has no right running around with even one gun, let alone two. You should have killed him. What on earth for? Listen, there's two more besides Dick and Tratton. They'll get you. You won't have a chance. I think you'd better clear out before Mr. Farley stops bleeding. He's not going to be in a very nice mood. Where are you going? Down to Mr. Clanton's office. I've got to have a little talk to him. In a moment, we'll return to Frontier Gentlemen. Who gets the last word? It all depends on who's playing CBS Radio's fascinating game Tuesday evening with Dr. Bergen Evans. A regular panel member is the witty and erudite John Mason Brown. Other guests vary from week to week. This Tuesday, they'll be Gary Moore and Lael Wurtenbaker. These bright people take off from language questions sent in by listeners and cover all sorts of fascinating ground before one or another of them ultimately gives you the last word on the question. Get the last word. This Tuesday, when it comes to you over most of these same stations. And now we return you to Anthony Ellis's production of Frontier Gentlemen. Mr. Kendall! Mr. Kendall, wait! You, you can't go down there. Dake went out the back. He'll have told Clanton by now. They'll be waiting. Well, that's all right. What's the matter with you? You want to die? Of course not. If you're gunning for them, you... Gunning for who? I'm not gunning for anybody. Then why are you going to see Frank? Well, I told you. I want to talk to him. Talk? Listen, you've got to get out of town. My dear girl. Don't you know who they are? Should I? You don't know what you've done. You... Shh. Quick. This way. <laughs> She took my hand and ran back up the street. We ducked down a narrow alleyway, up a rickety flight of stairs, which was a back entrance of the Empire Hotel, then along a musty corridor, past my room, and into hers. Oh. I, I don't think they'll think of looking for you here. Well, your friend Mr. Farley is going to be quite upset if they do. His name's not Farley. Clanton isn't Clanton. They're the Shelton boys. Shelton? The New Mexico Shelton boys? There's four of them. Brothers. What are they doing in South Sunday? Hiding out from Billy the Kid. Dake killed one of Billy's men. Billy swore to get them all for it. That's why Frank won't let anybody carry a gun. How do you know all this? It was my husband Dake killed. Harry joined up with Billy for excitement, I guess. One time he was gone out of town three months. I was lonesome. I met Dake when Harry came back. They had a fight over me. Dake outdrew him. We ran away together. And you thought I'd come after them, that Billy had sent me? They'll think it too now. <laughs> Lila, who made Frank sheriff here? Nobody. There wasn't one when we came. He just took over. <laughs> Funny thing is, I guess he's a pretty good sheriff. He's quit the old ways and likes it here. Why have you told me all this? I don't know. You talked with me like I was a lady. Indian treats his squaw better than Dick treats me. Maybe I wanted to see you finish him. And it's not going to be very pleasant for you anymore. Pleasant? Mm. Oh, mister, you've got a funny way of saying things. Lila, is there anywhere you could go, friends? In South Sunday? Now, what about home? I mean, Ohio. Home. You know what it'd cost to get there? I got no money. But if you could. If I could. I had nice folks. I don't even know if they're alive or dead. But I'd sure like to take a chance and find out. Well, Lila, we'll see what we can do. Where are you going now? To have that talk with Frank. 
Uh, do you know how to use a gun? Yes. Uh, take this one. Uh, lock yourself in after I've gone. You keep it. Huh? I've got a derringer. Oh, all right. Uh, here, in, in case I have any trouble, it's only $50. I don't want your money. Well, at least you'll be able to get out of town. Now, take it. Watch yourself, will you? Dake's got a mean draw. <laughs> I'll watch myself. The Shelton brothers and probably two of their chums were out looking for me now, and I was pretty certain of that. I was looking for them, too, but the advantage was on their side. The town was strange to me. So I went to the one place where I was fairly sure I'd be safe from a surprise attack. your hands where they are. You're Kendall? I'm Kendall. Billy the Kid sent you. Now listen, You I... may very slowly, carefully unbuckle your gun belt and let it drop to the floor. If you try to be foolish and brave, I shall be delighted to shoot you in the stomach. Not me, Mr. Kendall. You see, just, just like you say. Which Shelton are you? Monroe. Very well, Monroe. I wish you to walk to that cell in the far corner, go in, and close the door behind you. You will then stand with your back to the door. You wouldn't kill me. Oh, yes, I would. Close it, please. Good. Turn around, please. Now, I'm going to gag you. In order to do so... I must put my guns away and use two hands. If by any chance your friends come in and you make an outcry while I'm doing this, I shall teach you a trick I learned in India. It feels something like this. <laughs> Effective, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, head close to the bars, please. Oh, by the way, how many are there looking for me? Uh, hmm? Two? Uh, three. Ah, three. <laughs> There. Now, we'll make ourselves comfortable and wait for your brothers. They're coming. Now, remember what I told you, Monroe. Not a sound. Hey. Kendall! We know you're in there. Ah, blast. Kendall! You hear me? Is there a back door? Mm -mm. Come out with your hands up, or we're coming in after you. Let's get that mm. gag off. <laughs> I can see I'm going to need you. What? <laughs> What are you going to do? I'll probably have to end up killing you. Uh, nothing personal, you understand. Uh, what do you say, Kendall? Uh, out you come. Open the door and throw your guns out. I've got a much better idea. You open the door and throw your guns in. Monroe, are you in there? Tell him. Yeah, I'm in here, Frank. Kendall! You come on out. Maybe we can make a deal. You can keep your gun. I think it'd be safer if you came in without yours. We could rush you. You couldn't get all three of us. You have my permission. I don't know how your brother will feel about it. You want to tell him? Now, don't do anything crazy, Frank. He's got a gun at my head. He'll kill me. Frank! I hate to do this, but I'm afraid they don't believe you. No, no. Hey, Frank, he's going to shoot. You do what he says. All right, all right. Hand up. We'll open the door. Throw in our gun. You give us your word, you won't shoot. Not unless you do. One, two, three. 
Any more? No. Uh, we're coming in now. Well, a pleasant family reunion. The brothers Shelton. Uh, keep your hands where I can see them, won't you? Now, now look. The kid made a mistake about what happened down south. Uh, Dick didn't mean to kill Lila's husband, did you, Dick? I drew him, that's all. Yeah, that's the way it was. <laughs> Lila knows it, it was a fair fight. She'll tell you. Speaking of Lila, I hope she's well. Oh, she's fine. Mm. Now, we got no fight with the kid or you. Now, why don't we all go on down to the saloon and have a drink, huh? Talk it over. Oh, me and my brothers have been living a nice, quiet life up here. We don't want to make no trouble. Get him, Jake! Come on, Frank! Completely dishonorable and most unwise. Frank! Any more hidden armaments? <laughs> you going to kill us? It depends. Mr. Shelton, have you got $500? Yeah, I reckon so. Uh, Lila wants to go home. That's about what it'll cost. You uh, have the money here. Yeah, she's safe. Mm-hmm. Well, sure, she could take the boat out when it leaves in the morning. Ain't that so, Dave? Sure, sure she could. Get it. <laughs> ah, good. That settles the account. Now, all of you, get into the cell... Oh, incidentally, until this evening, I had no idea who you were. And I've certainly never met your friend, Billy the Kid. <laughs> I thought you'd like to know. Hey, what about Dake? He's got to have a doctor or he'll bleed to death. He probably will. I'm going back to the hotel. If Lila's all right, I'll send a doctor. If she's not, we'll find an undertaker. I want to thank you, Mr. Kendall. It's nothing, Lila. Good luck. You ever come Ohio way? You look me up. You hear? I remember that. Oh. <laughs> You're a gentleman. I'll never forget you. Goodbye. Morning, Mr. Kendall. Hear about the trouble last night? Yes. Sure must have been something. According to the sheriff, a whole gang rode in trying to shoot him up. A gang? Yep. Six of them. Dake Farley got hit in the arm. Really? The sheriff ran him off, though. Marvelous. I'll have to mention that in my article to the London Times. Uh, now, I wonder, has that letter from England arrived yet? Nope, I'm afraid not. Mail's already come in. Won't be any more till next week. Ah, uh. Well, when it does come, perhaps you'll be kind enough to forward it to me. Sure. What address? In care of the express office. Rosebud, Montana Territory. Frontier Gentleman was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Jack Crucian, Virginia Gregg, Stacey Harris... Harry Bartell and Barney Phillips. Music was composed and conducted by Jerry Goldsmith. Join us again next week for another report from The Frontier Gentlemen. Johnny Jacobs speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.